Thanks for watching our tutorial Azure AD with Just-in-Time provisioning. Just-in-Time provisioning means we will create and update users based on the SAML response that we get from the identity provider during login. So what we'll do here is we'll configure our single sign-on app on Jira first, we'll start off there. Then uh, we swap over to Azure AD to create an enterprise application, how Azure calls it, uh, to be able to accept our uh, SAML request. Um, then we jump back to Jira where we complete the configuration of our app and finish and test the configuration in Jira then. So let's go to our Jira. I'm logged into Jira as an admin. So I'm gonna go to administration, manage apps. And I've already installed our um, SAML single sign-on app. So on the left-hand side, you'll see two menu items, SAML single sign-on and user sync. And the one we'll focus on in this tutorial is the um, SAML single sign-on one. So I'm gonna click SAML single sign-on. And here we go. When we enter our plugin for the first time, it will present us with this uh, welcome wizard. And what we wanna do is add a new identity provider. So I click the add new IDP button. And here I need to select the IDP type. That's gonna be Azure AD for our case. Give it a description. And here in the bottom, you actually see there's also the link to um, our documentation where you find the step-by-step -step guides um, that you may need. So I'm gonna go uh, click on next. And in this screen, the plugin shows us all the information that we need to configure the Azure AD side of things. And uh, it's important to note at the moment, it's all the same URLs because I've left all the default configuration of the plugin. I'm just gonna copy this. Have you changed anything in the service provider settings of the plugin, um, then these URLs might be um, uh, slightly different. So there you need to watch out when to copy them uh, into the right fields in Azure AD. Like I said in this tutorial, it's easy because it's the default settings and they'll all be the same. So now I actually go over to Azure AD. Being logged in with my admin account, I go to enterprise applications now, create a new application, And I need to search for resolution. And then I see uh, our predefined apps in the uh, application store already. And since we're configuring Jira here, I'm gonna select the SAML SSO for Jira. And I need to give it a um, sensible name that I can find it later again. So yeah, demo uh, Jira. And I say add. So this might take a couple of seconds now for this app to create. And here we are, it redirected us to the uh, configuration page of that app. So the first thing we have to do is go to single sign-on and select the single sign-on method. In our case, that will be SAML. So I click on SAML. And then you see a lot of things are already pre-configured um, by our template. There's only a few things we need to add. So I uh, click on the edit for basic SAML configuration and here we need to paste the URL and replace this with the URL uh, we just copied. The same for reply URL and the same with sign on URL and then you can say save. Okay, we can close this. No, I'll test later. I'm gonna go a little bit down. Here is the app federation metadata URL. So I'm gonna copy that because we'll input that in our plugin later. And then there's only um, one more thing to do here, which is go to properties, scroll down to user assignment, uh, where it says yes, change that to no, and say save. That means everyone can use this integration. And that's it on uh, the Azure AD side already. Um, since we have it in the catalog, a lot of stuff is predefined. So um, I think that's a relatively easy setup. So I move over. Oh, by the way, also to mention, um, since we're in the catalog, it also works with the free and the Office 365 free licenses. Uh, otherwise you would need to have um, a um, premium account in Azure AD for those users. So I'm gonna go back to our Jira plugin now.
So now we're back in our plugin and I clicked on next. Now it wants me to paste the metadata URL that I just copied from uh, Azure AD. And I can say import. And now it says metadata import successful. So I'm gonna go to next. Now the plugin wants to know if the user IDs that's being sent from the identity provider are the same than the user IDs um, in uh, Jira. Uh, in our case, they will be the same because we're creating the users um, with just-in-time provisioning. If that would not be the case, uh, you would uncheck this box and you'd have a lot more options to modify those usernames, convert them, run them through regular expressions, etc. For this tutorial, we don't need any of that. So I'm gonna go to next. And now we come to the uh, user update method. Um, and here I'm gonna scroll down. We want to select update from SAML attributes because that's our just-in-time provisioning method where we update and create the users once they um, once we get the SAML response from the identity provider. So now that I selected that, you see I'll get a lot more option. First one is, uh, do I want to create new users? Yes, I do in which directory to add them. It also gives me the option if I want to update non-SAML provisioned users, that would be uh, if you have existing users already, do I want to update them or do I only want to update and modify users that the plugin has uh, been created? That's your choice, you need to think about that. Um, and the next thing, it's gonna ask us for uh, some attributes. Uh, first of all, to be able to create a user in Jira, uh, I need a couple of fields filled. I need a username, I need a full name and I need a um, email attribute, yeah? And here I need to now um, tell the plugin in which um, uh, attribute in the SAML message, uh, which ones is carried. So, and if you look to the right, I already cheated a bit. So I copied um, the values out of our step-by-step -step guide. So by default, um, um, in this attribute schemas, microsoft.com slash identity claims display name, that's where the full name is carried in the summer response um, in terms of Azure. So I'm gonna copy that and put that into the full name attribute. Like I said, you find that in the step-by-step -step guide. And now the next one, email attribute is a little bit more complicated um, depending on what your Azure setup is. If your um, email address is exactly the same as your Azure username, um, then like, like it is for our demo, then you use this um, identity claims name as the attribute. If that's not the case, um, then there's an attribute email address in um, Azure AD. But that's only filled if you either use Exchange um, to get uh, so Office 365 or if you use um, Active Directory synchronization. So if that's your setup and those um, email addresses are different than the um, Azure AD login name and you're sure it's always filled, um, then you can use this email address attribute. Again, all of that is mentioned and explained in the step-by-step -step guide as well. The next thing, it would allow us to um, have a group attribute. So if we would also send group in the SAML message, um, um, we could put the group attribute in here. Um, that's not what we do in this tutorial and it's not on by default in Azure AD. If that's what you want, we actually have a um, knowledge base article on how to do that. Uh, but for Azure AD, there's also a warning. Azure AD doesn't send the clear text um, group names, only group IDs in the SAML response uh, if you turn it on. So it will be cryptic strings. You can modify them with our regular expressions to into clear text names, but that only really makes sense if you have a few groups. If you really need groups in Azure AD, then I would really recommend you look at our user sync functionality. Yeah, so um, we're not gonna do a group attribute here. What we want to achieve is that uh, for every user that's created, the uh, plugin puts that user into a default group, um, which in our case will be Jira software users. So I'm gonna um, say here plus add one and say Jira software users. So that way, every user the plugin creates gets put into that group. Via that group, he gets access to Jira. And if we wanna add more groups um, to it, then we can do that in, in Jira. So um, you can actually see there are a lot more options here. Um, so read through them. If your setup slightly different or open a case or a screen share with us, 
uh, to discuss what the best setup is um, for you. And in the Azure AD scenario, I would also really urge you to look at uh, user sync as an, as sometimes or most of the times actually a better alternative. So now I can go to save and next. And we're pretty much done here. Yeah, so now the um, the configuration is essentially mostly finished. Now our plugin recommends to um, test the setup, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna say start test. Now you can see the plugin created something that we call an authentication tracker. And for us, an authentication tracker is something we invented that keeps everything around authentication uh, together. And here you get a real life view on what's happening there. So I'll take this special URL and copy it. And I'm now gonna open that in a private browsing window where I'm not authenticated so that the plugin will redirect me, get me to authenticate against Azure AD um, and log me in. And then I can go back to the plugin here where it shows me all the results. So I'm gonna go to my private browsing tab now, paste the URL, hit enter. And now you see we quickly hit Jira and it redirected us to Azure AD. So I'm just gonna log in with my demo user No. And there we go. I'm logged into this. So now I'm going to go back to um, my other uh, Jira with the authentication tracker. And now you can actually see um, the authentication tracker was a success. The user ID recognized was CR local one at Azure AD lab resolution at the E. We logged in. You got a lot more additional messages. Down here, you see the login information, which essentially is all the information that Azure AD has sent us in the um, SAML message. And um, you can see uh, the plugin created the user. You'll see the original SAML messages and the SAML response, some request info, etc. So you see this gives you a lot of information about the authentication that just happened. And it's a great troubleshooting tool for us. So as one tip, if you click the collect support info with this tracker button down here, It'll actually download a um, JSON blob with the plugins configuration um, without any uh, secret private keys. Um, and this, um, the contents of this authentication tracker that you have just seen. Um, and if you attach that um, uh, JSON file to a support case with that, it will actually give us a lot of information um, to most of the time help you straight away uh, what the issue is, what the challenge is, or what you need to change in your configuration to get working. So it's an incredibly powerful uh, troubleshooting tool here as well. So we don't need to do that here because um, it's been a success what we've done. So I click on next. And this is the last configuration screen. So far, everything that we have done uh, has not interfered with any user logins. They have still seen their uh, username, password prompts, um, etc. We got redirected because we used a um, special URL. The users would have been unaffected. If I click on enable SSO redirect now and say save and close, that's gonna change. From that point onwards, our plugin will intercept any uh, request to the login prompt and redirect the users to um, Azure AD. So you can either do that now, or what I do most of the time, I leave it unchecked, say save and close, um, and then come back to the plugin during a maintenance window um, and turn on that functionality after some more users have tested it uh, and I had my communication. Here, we just wanna turn it on now, so I'm gonna go to save and close. And that's it, we're finished now. The only thing left for me is to say thanks for um, watching this tutorial. I'm Christian Reichert, c.reichert at resolution.de. Uh, um, I'd, I'd really love if you get in contact. Um, you see our support URL, resolution.de slash go slash support. You can also book uh, free screen share sessions. So if you want us to help you uh, along with the setup or you have a more complicated case and wanna discuss it first, then absolutely feel free to go to resolution.de slash go slash Calendly. Um, and then we'll set up an hour with you where we can talk this through or guide you via screen share through that installation. That's one of our preferred methods because it's an easy way to get a success. 
uh, for you and get you the configuration that you like. Uh, also, feel free to visit our marketplace page, um, resolution.de slash go slash marketplace, where you find out um, more about the apps that we have, also all the other apps. So um, yeah, again, thanks for watching this. Uh, it's really been fun and I hope to see you again.